Hello and welcome back. So now that we have the basics down, we can actually start doing something. So let's start by looking at our file structure. We have a CSS folder with our CSS files in, and we are probably not going to touch the CSS folder at all. And then we have our SAS folder where we have our SCSS files, and currently we have only one of them. And then we have our config.rb, which is a compass configuration file, and we're going to look at that in a later video. And we have a home.png, uh, it's a screenshot that I made from the actual design. And we're going to use this as a reference. And then we have our index.html. Now, remember when Compass started a project for us, it automatically did the reset. And I removed the reset because I prefer normalizing my CSS instead of resetting it. So let's normalize our CSS and I'm going to download it. And now I'm going to select all and hit command C. So I'm copying the file and go back to sublime text. Now, SAS is just CSS and that's why I keep saying that you you can choose which features you want to use from SAS and which features you don't want to use. And normalized CSS is actually a plain CSS file. It's not some kind of hybrid file or anything. It's just CSS. And I can just create a new tab here and paste in normalized CSS. I'm going to save normalized CSS into a new folder. And I'm going to call this for folder um, partials. And partials is just a naming convention and you don't have to follow it. It's not some kind of magic folder name or anything like that. It's just a folder name that is meant for partial CSS files. So I'm just creating a partial CSS folder. I'm going to remove everything else except this and I'm going to call this normalized CSS. Now actually I have to rename this to SCSS and that is the only difference. I'm also going to add an underscore before the file name. Now what that is going to do is that Compass is automatically going to try to compile every file that we have in our SAS folder. And if I add an underscore before the file name Compass is automatically going to ignore it. So I don't want my normalize.scss file to be compiled on its own. I'm going to import it later on. So now I'm just going to save it as underscore normalize.scss. There we have it. And now in here I can say first I'm going to import the compass itself. And then I'm going to import partials and normalize. Now I don't need to specify neither the underscore or the dot s css. I could of course do it this way if I wanted to but I'm pretty much used to just saying normalize and now it doesn't matter if I have an underscore there or I don't have an underscore and uh, what is actually the file extension. So I'm just saying import partials, normalize, and that's it. And when I save that, Compass runs successfully, and if I open up the screen.css, screen.css, then I can see, here we go, this is the normalized file, and it was just imported inside the screen.css file. Now, that is really, really useful, because you don't have to make any additional header requests. Now you can have all your CSS or SAS files split up any way that you want them to be and you can just use one global SCSS file 
to import everything else. So for example, you can import compass. Now I'm importing normalize. I can have a separate file, for example, to import header or to import uh, posts or something like that. So this is really useful because at the end it's just going to grab all the CSS from all those other files and then compile them into that one file that you are importing in. So that is really useful. There is another thing that I would like to include before we continue and that is blank work. Now blank work is a grid system that I made from SAS functions and mixins and variables and you can download it at blankwork.net and there are other grid systems out there for example 960 GS they have their own SAS grid system there is blueprint for example and blueprint is actually included inside compass framework but I'm just going to use my own grid system because it's the it's my preferred way of doing things so I'm going to copy the blankwork.scss file I'm going to paste it inside my partials folder like this and then I'm going to go back to sublime text and say at import partials and blank work and a semicolon to the end and save yep compass runs successfully so that means that the file was imported okay now we are ready to actually start doing the layout. Okay, so let's start by styling our wrapper. So I'm going to say class wrapper and this is actually where we start using blank work because I'm going to say at include wrapper. So this is a blank work mixin and what it is going to do it's automatically going to center the design and let's just see so it centers the design and it sets the width to be 960 pixels. Now the way that it does that is if we open up the blankwork.scss file uh, partials blankwork.scss it, it uses 960 pixels as a default width with 12 columns and these are these variables that are set right here so I can take these and if I copy them over here and for example I decide that I want 13 columns instead of 12 columns and remove everything else here I can just save this and if I come back and reload the page and hit inspect element in here and inspect the wrapper element you see the width has changed from 960 to 1040 pixels so if I come back here and comment this out by the way you can comment in SAS with a double slash now if I go back to Chrome and you can see that we have 960 pixels again here right now so it uses 960 as a default width but you can certainly change the amount of columns you want you can change the amount of I'm just going to go back here you can change the amount uh, of width each column has and the margin between each column as well um, we are going to use the default values which is 12 columns 60 pixels for each column and 10 pixel spacing to each side of the column so 10 pixel margin left and 10 pixel margin right okay but what are these default values right here what do they mean so to illustrate that we're going to use a different example I'm going to go back to screen.scss and I'm going to close blank work dot CSS file as well and go a little lower and let's say that I'm going to say header 
and I'm just going to give I'm just going to set a variable of color here just we j just as we did before and I'm going to say that the color is going to be black now in header element I'm going to set the background color to be the color that I set now I'm going to move sublime text to the left here and just use one column here and move it to the right like that okay now we talked about variables before if I set black here it's going to automatically use black in here now if I for example have a color set to red and now a default what this is going to do it is going to set the red to be the default value now if I have my color variable now set to black I can set another color variable and I'm going to name this the same as the previous one and set it to green now this is automatically going to overwrite the black color here that is uh, probably the expected way of variables to work I know that they don't work this way in less but in SAS this is how variables work but SAS actually goes one step further and offers even better variable functionality in my opinion and this is how this is where the default value comes in now if I set the red to be de the default value and remove everything else the red is going to be the default value and if I set the color to be now black then it's going to be black but if I set the color to be black and save it before I defined the red color it is still going to be black so what this means basically is that set the color variable to be red unless there is color variable already set so the red color is the default value if you don't find a variable color and since I have defined a variable color uh, a variable color to black it it doesn't execute this at all so that is a really useful functionality that SAS offers again now and that is exactly what is happening inside uh, sorry and that is exactly what is happening inside blank work so you can see that we have set the default value to 12 columns we have set a default width of 60 pixels for each column and I have set the default value for each uh, gutter to be 20 pixels that means that I can call the blank work at the top of the SAS file and then anywhere in the file I can just decide that I want to have 15 columns instead of 12 columns so default variables are really really useful when you're distributing your code to somewhere else and where there is some kind of value that is supposed to be overridden but just in case nothing is provided you can fall back to a default value no matter if the code is included before or after or something like that okay so I think we'll stop here for this time and next time I promise you we will get our hands dirty and start writing the style sheets because we have a lot ahead of us but we just had to cover all these basic principles and things like that before we actually start doing anything so thank you for watching and I really hope to see you next time